<laughs> most most people. Uh, Downhill from there. If they look pretty, if they look pretty wiry, I, I'll just keep it on. You know? <laughs> Cross, what's these last few weeks, that this event tonight, just being just being remembered, which you know, players don't don't get that privilege. Yeah. What does that whole process mean to you? Uh, that process is, uh, is it means everything to me because I put in a lot of hard work here at the U. And, uh, and anytime anybody remembers you for, for anything, um, it's pretty special. So uh, to, to be come back, to come back and be recognized in this fashion uh, in front of the whole stadium, and, and, and this is in front of the whole country as uh, you know, a, 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 a guy comes back home, you know, and uh, is honored for what he did in the past. That's an awesome thing to me. It's very special. We're obviously. Miami, whether it's Dolphins, Hurricanes, Heat, whatever, we're a city that loves tradition and loves mm -hmm. remembering the past and all yes. that. As a huge name from Miami's past, how do you feel about Miami's future right now with Goodell and, and what he's trying to do here? You know, I really feel uh, really good uh, from, from all accounts. From what I've been hearing uh, from afar in my home back in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, from being down here for the last couple of days and, and talking to a whole host of people. I really feel very strongly that it's going to be a positive future for the guy. I hear good things about Al, how um, how aggressive he is, uh, how aggressive he is with recruiting, uh, and uh, how aggressive he is with um, just with the guys and making sure things are things go flow smoothly. Uh, very meticulous uh, about his practices. Uh, very organized. That's the, that's the term that I've gotten uh, time and time again from a, a, a bunch of guys that he's. Most organized guy that they've ever seen. So um, uh, that being said, any good team has to have a high level of organization. Uh, I've been on great teams. I've been on not so great teams, and the teams that I was on that we won with we had very good organization from top down. So uh, uh, I think the future will be bright with Coach Golden in that respect. Friends, family, how, how much of the entourage you got with you tonight for, for this? Oh man. <laughs> I got my beautiful wife Rose. She's a Miami Edison product, and uh, my, my wonderful kids, uh, Kyra, who's 14 now, I Iris, who's 11, and little RJ, which is Russell Jr. He's seven, so uh, they're all uh, accompanying me, and I have a, a, a bunch of friends uh, that, that have come to see the game tonight, and just uh, it's always good to have those people by your side, those people that are. Uh, close to you because all the honors they, they come you know and, and they go but at the end of the day when the game is over uh, when all the cheering stops your family is, is very important and I, I've always been been about family and uh, I'm, I'm happy they're, they're here with me to celebrate. Russell uh, you know when I used to be the sideline reporter I used to see when you come back to the games I'd always see you uh, handing towels to the guys <laughs> handing water to the guys and to me it was kind of odd was like here's this guy that's one of the best to ever play, and you know, you look like you were just getting your hands dirty, getting in there, helping the guys out. So, what does it mean to you to, to kind of pass that legacy on and come back and, and help these guys out and shed any kind of knowledge or help that you can with this team? And you know what? That means that means the world to me. And uh, you know, it came a time a couple years ago when I was doing that, and then somebody with compliance said, oh, "You can't do that no more." I said, "Really?" You know, it's like oh, it gives an unfair advantage, and I'm like, "Wow, man." how times have changed. So i tell you one thing, it's been frustrating that I can't do that. Uh, but I know one thing, when I was playing, a guy like Jerome Brown would be on the sidelines doing the exact same thing for me. A guy who was gone on to the NFL and uh, uh, doing things, big things in the NFL, Jerome, uh, Bill Hawkins, Greg Mark, Cortez Kennedy, Dan Stubbs, comes to the sideline and wipes the sweat off my brow Give me a cup of water and say, son, keep going. You're doing good. You're doing good. That means the world to me. Because, and that's what the U has all been always about. And that's where our tradition lies. The guys coming back and saying, hey, you know, you can do it. You can do it. And give you that positive energy, that positive burst. Um, so, um, you know, I, I may not be able to do it with a, a towel or wipe anybody's sweat or hand, uh, anybody water anymore. But uh, they know that I, I, I'm close by. And uh, I'll be there in spirit, you know, maybe not next to him, 
and I'm still there, uh, helping them in any way that I can so that they can become better players, but not only better players, better people. Along those lines, how, how difficult have the last couple of months been? I mean, obviously there's some rule changes and some things are going to happen now and all that. As somebody, this place means so much to you, how tough has it been to see those stories and hear your school get hit like that? I'll tell you what, uh, really tough because I mean, you hear about all the things, good things that Coach Golden is doing and you're uh, getting real charged up and real focused and ready for the season. And then, you know, you know the beginning of August, like, bam, you know. Uh, and the, the key word for me was depressing because, uh, you know, I know these kids are good. These are good, good kids. Um, um, the, I know the program is, uh, is a program of integrity overall. You may have had some kids that made mistakes, but who, hasn't, who of us haven't made mistakes? Uh, and who of us haven't been influenced by uh, dubious people, at, at, you know, at times? And that, that's really uh, the, fr the frustrating part about it for me is I just look at it as a situation where a person is really uh, come in, one person, to, to really tear down all the good things that we have within this university, uh, an infection, so to speak. And uh, it really hurts my heart to see these kids going through because ultimately it's affecting the kids, it's hurting the kids. Um, and you know, this guy not only was able to influence 18, 19 year olds, but apparently he's been able to influence people a lot older, you know, out of millions of dollars. So uh, it, it's very hurtful for me in that respect. But I know deep down, uh, as, as uh, President Shalala says, that the integrity of the investigation uh, and this due process but also, you know, I'm here to protect and talk about and be an advocate for the integrity of the university. So with the defensive tackles on the current team, what you like about it, what you like to see more of it, and just how important is that position, obviously, how the dominant guy Well, I, I tell you what, I know one thing, I'm glad to see Big Forston back. I'll be interested to see how the season goes. I know he's had some, uh, some stops and starts. Um, but um, I, I, I love I've loved him ever since he came in. I was in Dallas uh, when Northwestern came and played one of our uh, Dallas schools uh, when he was a senior in high school. And I love him then. Uh, I, I know he's got some great talent. All of, all of our tackles do. I know one thing, that they have a great coach in Jethro Franklin because he was my defensive line coach at, at Green Bay back in 2000, my last year in the NFL. So no, if anything, they're going to be coached up well. So. Um, it's a very important position. I think the most important on the field because everything starts right there in the middle. And uh, if you can get some pressure, if you make some bad things happen for the office, you get on the other side of that line, things are going to happen. And not only get on the other side of that line, but run sideline to sideline, like I know all those guys can do. So um, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him, especially do really well this year. What am I doing? I am, most importantly, just kind of raising my family. Uh, I hadn't worked vocationally in about a year. I was uh, doing some uh, sales uh, work for uh, an electronics company in Dallas uh, for the previous four years. The last year, um, I've been doing a lot of charitable work. Um, I've been doing a lot of motivational speaking to kids and churches and kind of whoever asks. Not really for a whole lot of money. <laughs> but, uh, you know, people want to hear what, what my story is. I think I have a unique and unusual story that people need to hear and I go out and do it and uh, not, not for you know $25,000 a, a pop but you know because I enjoy doing it and I know it can help people so the long story short a lot of uh, motivation speaking a lot of charitable work and lending my name to good cause. Go, going back to your career here when did it click for you that, that this was that going to be something special that you realized that you could handle the college game and Get it done. Well, I, I, I tell the story. I knew one one uh, time it was more, most importantly, it wasn't anything that I did. But the, the, when I knew that moment, I knew that we were. I was a part of a big time program. It was that OU Miami game, 1986, with Boz coming in town. And uh, when I saw Vinny Testaverde run across the field, back and forth, evading tackles on that stage. And uh, him making a first down, I was like, man, I'm a part of something special. Uh, and uh, I see Jerome Brown out there barking it up at the uh, OU guys. 
And uh, that's when I knew that I was a part of something special. And I had to really try to keep up in order to be something here at the University of Miami. I really didn't realize that I was going to be any good, <laughs> uh, you know, for a, a little while after that when I st started to play and started to uh, the FSU game uh, in 88 when the Deion Sanders and the guys came in town and we beat them 31 to nothing. Um, and that, that's when I realized that, you know, I could play in this game. I just had to keep running. <laughs> keep running. And, that was the, and from that from that game on, uh, I didn't make a whole bunch of tackles or any sacks in that game, but I was running around the field. Uh, and uh, I knew that if I kept running and uh, uh, kept those big old offensive linemen off of me, that I'd be doing some good that I could last a little while in the, in, in the collegiate ranks. Were you able to talk to the team today or recently? No, no. I, I, I had a chance to speak to Coach Golden yesterday, and that was only my second time ever talking to him. Uh, and I, you know, I. I didn't want to try to impose what you know, the, you know my thoughts or whatever to mess up his 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 game week. So um, you know, I just I, I know I didn't speak to him, but I, I know I know he's going to be ready. Uh, uh, those guys have had enough former former Canes come back and uh, do a lot of good speaking to him. Uh, Ed Reed and uh, Ray Lewis included. So um, I'll get my chance. I'll give my chance, and I'll give my words. I'll give my story, and uh, you know, you know, we'll make that connection. So, hopefully. you didn't ask me a question. I'm just soaking it all in. Soaking it in. Yeah. All right. All right. Anything else? All right. Yeah. Obviously, did great things for you last time. You touched on great things. What made it so special? Why is it so special to you? Why is it so good? You, um, is special to me because they gave me a chance when nobody else was, was, going, was willing to do that. When nobody else was willing to look at a fat boy from Chicago, from the south side of Chicago back in 1986. Only Indiana State was the only other team that offered me a scholarship. That was the only one that offered me a scholarship. And I am uh, indebted to UM because they took that chance. Coach Hubbard Alexander, who was a receiver's coach who was recruiting the Chicago area at the time, and Jimmy Johnson said, hey, we're going to take a chance on you. And I signed sight unseen on the, on the dotted line after the signing date with the last scholarship in 1986. And, uh, you know, they said at least this guy will probably graduate because I had good grades. <laughs> <laughs> and they needed to up the, uh, the graduation rate. But they're doing pretty good right now. So, uh, But when, when nobody else looked at Russell, Maryland, when they, uh, I could have just fallen uh, beneath the cracks and been another – uh, just a uh, Chicago uh, athlete that, uh, uh, you know, was hanging out on the, on the street corners after his high school days. You <laughs> gave me that opportunity to come 1,500 miles away from home and prove myself, prove my work. And uh, I was able to be immersed amongst a special uh, aggregate of guys who wanted to win, but not only wanted to win, they wanted to have fun doing it. And, and they wanted to help the young guys that came in and didn't want to keep a secret their secret to success. They didn't want to keep it a secret. They gave us the keys to the kingdom. And I'm forever, forever indebted to that because it wouldn't have happened otherwise. Which ring is that, by the way? This is the Super Bowl 30. Super Bowl 30. Super Bowl 30. Uh, I, won, I was able to win three, three of these rings with the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, this is the last one we won in the 90s. And I always like to say as a little joke, you know, when I came into the Cal, you can talk about your triplets, your Troy Aikmans, and your Emmitt Smiths, and your Michael Irvins, all great players. But they were all there before, uh, you know, and they didn't start winning Super Bowls until yours truly got there. <laughs> <laughs> when yours truly left, 1996, never again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Russell. Thank you so much, Russell. Right, you're welcome. Thank you, Russell.